Indeed, great questions have practically characterized our cultures. At times, they've taken us down some rather strange paths. They've given rise to religions, and of course, they've given birth to and destroyed entire civilizations. But curiously, the most important questions, the greatest ones of all, have yet to be answered. And as long as we don't surrender, as long as we continue asking ourselves these questions, no matter that we might even suspect finding an answer to them is impossible, we will continue being human beings. We will continue evolving and growing. There are many ways to formulate the very same question. And the first question is, what are we? Are we animals? Extraordinary animals, but animals all the same? Or are we something more than that? And if we are, what's the difference between us and the rest of the species who live and change alongside us? We live immersed in the reality of a technological world that no other living being has been capable of creating. However, if we think that this makes us some kind of super being, a kind of culmination of evolution itself, we'd be making a very big mistake. Many people believed that man was the irrefutable destiny to which life simply had to lead in its process of changing over time. As if we were the center of the universe to which all else was subject. But it isn't quite like that. The fact that our modernity, for instance, has enabled us to communicate over incredible distances is nothing more than the fruit of the needs of our species. The same need that has enabled butterflies to communicate with their mates by chemical means over dozens of miles, which for them is an incredible distance as well. It's the same imperious need that has allowed bats to invent their radar-like vision, or fungi to invent penicillin. Every invention responds solely to the demands for survival of the species that invents it. However, inventions don't make one species different from another. By that yardstick, all creatures, whether simple or complex, would be nothing more than biological organisms. Some simple, some more complex, but organisms all the same. Throughout the course of human knowledge, there have been a series of events, or developments, considered key in demonstrating a kind of dividing line, a cutoff point between human beings and other living things. But for many people, these historical occurrences have lost the strength of their argument as human knowledge has increased in a variety of different areas. One of these classical key events was the advent of language. No other species could speak. No other being could wonder about its conscience or its transcendence. We are homo querens, the being that interprets itself. Philosophy has also tried to define man as homo faber, the being who manipulates tools. We have been called homo ludens, those who play. And of course we are also homo orans, beings who pray to a higher being. But let's not get into that, not for now anyway, because metaphysics aside, none of these definitions fits our reality quite as neatly and exclusively as they were originally thought to. For starters, we could have an exhaustive debate in an attempt to establish the unique characteristics of our principal form of communication, the word. Written, spoken, or imagined, it is without a doubt the most complex and perfect means of expression. It describes symbols and intangible things, even things that don't exist in the physical world. Words, speech, is certainly something special. Oh, 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 oh. 
Nevertheless, we mustn't forget that there exists an infinite number of systems of communication in the animal kingdom, and all of them are languages. Many are primary, but surprisingly, some of them are rich and very complex. In fact, they're all as rich and complex as the species using them requires them to be, not a bit more, nor a bit less. Because in nature, it would be a clear waste to have too big a brain containing parts of no practical use. The question is, if we look for a difference between animals and ourselves as a function of the capacity for communication, we'd find that such a difference would be a gradual one at best. It might be enormous, but only in a sense of degree. A question of quantity, as it were. But not quality. Take a pose. Another parameter postulated as proving the difference between them and us has been the use of tools. For a long time, it was believed that in order to use instruments, it was necessary to have a privileged intelligence, a superior biological level. But alas, we're faced with the same dilemma. As we have learned more and more about animals, we have observed that the use of utensils is hardly an exclusive trait of human beings. Without a doubt, no other species on the planet makes use of such sophisticated mechanisms as the ones invented by humanity's great geniuses. But we must admit that we are once again up against a fact that merely highlights distinctions as a matter of degree. The technological distance that separates us from animals could be described in a geometric progression, exponential even. But given the technology doesn't make us any more human than we already are, it doesn't differentiate us from them. And even among the tiniest of insects with very simple neuronal structures, we can find examples that refute the theory that Homo habilis was the first or most advanced being to use tools, and thus establish an unequivocal point of differentiation between himself and the rest of living things. This wasp chooses, or rejects as the case may be, pebbles it needs to make vibrate with impeccable mastery and without the need of intelligence per se. The wasp needed to develop this technique to bury its eggs underground out of the reach of predators. Just like all beings, it must protect its young. It digs a nest, covers it up, and then assumes an appearance suitable for hunting prey. It injects a dose of paralyzing venom, a dose as perfectly calculated as the most advanced scientific system could measure, an anesthetic. Finally, after depositing an egg upon it, it fixes it to the wall 